the nameless photograph. He sat on the end of the stage, a tired old man with gold-rimmed glasses. Thin locks of wispy white hair hung down over the starched white shirt collar and suspenders. He wore brown hook and eye high top dress shoes and black trousers, half of the one three-piece suit that he owned. On his lap rested a well-worn guitar. He waited patiently to be called to the microphone. Then in a quivery voice began to sing a song of ancient origin. The crowd grew silent, transfixed by the frail image before them. He finished his song, bowed lightly to the audience, and with a faraway look in his eyes, turned and walked slowly back to his chair. He had bared his soul, everything in life, a journey of some 90 years. They could listen, but never know the roads traveled, the hardships and disappointments, the memories of days dim and distant. It was the last performance. His life flashed before him as he walked back to his chair on the end of the platform. They took him back to his home in the country, thanked him, and took a final photograph as he stood by his house in the yard. Today that picture hangs on a flower paper wall in a small black frame. A nameless old man and his guitar frozen in time. The hands on the clock stopped in a frantic world that rushes onward toward its own demise. You like them? Yeah. Look at that one. Oh my lord. I've got the light. Now that's a pretty finish too. They got that right, didn't they? Yeah. What's the pit guard uh, material? If you get it like that? Uh, we make it. You make it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Wes, Wes makes every one of them. Yeah. But I mean the actual material. Yeah, it's a resin. We mix. Oh, you actually we mix? Mixed oh, color okay. So you get the, so that colors and all that something that you? Yeah. I tried to make that was a little darker. finish that nut out too. Yeah, I like the finish on the headstock too. Yeah. That's looks that's got a good patina to it. Yeah, I like the finishes. Yeah, that ain't got that Detroit shine to it. Yeah. <laughs> did y'all what did you all do your pick guards? What was the inspiration or I mean did you see the original guitar of this? Or did you go for this? What are you working off of for your shape? I guess is what I'm saying. The are shape you? was actually, it came from, we went to uh, this guy in St. Louis, who's uh, a collector, I don't know, David Anderson's his name. Uh -huh. And uh, he had four of them. And that was that was really where we kind of got the Four sense. what? 12 fret dreadnoughts. Four, he had four. <laughs> uh, not exactly. <laughs> Because we, Walter Carter had one. This was 2019. We traveled to Nashville to go see the one Walter Carter had. And then Noam Pakelny and Chris Eldridge told us, they said, well, there's this guy in St. Louis that has four of them. He's got two 18s and 228. <laughs> I know. It's, and I mean, there was, what, 12 of them made? There weren't that many of them. There wasn't that many, man. And he had 
four of them. And that was where we kind of went and studied them. So going to get to see the Gary's guitar used to be yours. Right. That really kind of just solidified it. So that was where we got the picture. But you're really, you're going to get a lot of wear. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right there. You know, you're going to get, get yeah, you are. A, lot, a lot of wear. The 18 had a lot of wear on it. Right yeah, there. right. And it didn't have that when you got it. didn't have it when I had it. Yeah, because when yeah. I, the earlier pictures of you with it, yeah. it's pretty, it's like, it's clean. Well, I, I used to, when I'd get to really play in rhythm a lot of times, I would drag, I'd know I'd be hitting the corner of the bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that, that, right in there. Right. I didn't know, you know. Did the 28 have the big guard on it when you got it? No. No, no, no it's just like the way you saw it, the way I, with the exception of uh, the bridge was all screwed up. It was a mess. It was a damn mess. The bridge was all screwed up and I had, it was no flat on the first two strings. Right in. And I had a cobbled up a piece of bar fret oh, in front of the, the saddle. Front. Right. And I like really? the sound and response of that. <laughs> Where'd you get the piece of art from? Oh, I, hell, I've got enough here to fret a guitar. Like a <laughs> <laughs> the worst <laughs> stuff you ever saw. It looks, you wouldn't kick it out of the road if you saw it. It's <laughs> terrible looking. It's still got the forward scale on it and everything. It's really. That's great. Uh, the bridge, I don't believe, was original on this, on the, uh, yeah, I don't on think the Gary guitar when I had right. it either. Bridge had been replaced, the guard, all that work had been the touch yeah. up. Yeah. And all that. And uh, But it was a bit of a survivor. It had been through some stuff. But yeah, that's the that's the main thing I was was the, the length of the guard. There's a video of you in the eighties playing with this big celluloid rounded pick. And a big white I used to use a tri corner fender heavy. Right. And then I got into using heavy tri-corner GHS picks. Really? For old time. And would you yeah. round them off? Uh, there was a time that I didn't do anything. Back when I did the best, or the, shall we say, the most wild playing that I ever did, I don't think I did a damn thing. <laughs> just a, a, just them. a plain old three-corner <laughs> pick, yeah. Was that been... Now I try to get by, I use the back to try to get a little tone, and then lately I've been trying to use the point a little more to get a little more definition, but it was a whole different thing with me back there, man. I, I am nowhere well physically compared to what I was back then. That album, Whiskey Before Breakfast, the first time I heard that album, it turned my brain inside out. Now yeah. that's that's a 14 fret D8. Right. That's a 34. That's a 34, bar fret. Yes, yes. But that album just flipped my head inside out. Probably, oh. probably strong with a heavy string on top. Mm -hmm. Probably a sixty even up here. Really? I would use. I use sixty a lot. I used to string a guitar like this. I think I strung up a lot of the time with an eleven and a fifteen or sixteen and twenty four, and then what I do now, thirty two, forty two. And then I'd go way up if it, depending on the guitar. I went on the 18. I think I definitely Run went 60. up higher. Yeah, and uh, the high, heaviest strings I ever used was in here. I would use a 25, and I would use a 34 and a 44, uh, just under medium, yeah, yeah. and then a heavy bass. But I never really cared to get all the way up to medium very much. What yeah. it is with me, I always felt like. If it's too tense in here on the left hand, where you're holding down and trying, to, particularly when you're barring down and stuff. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you got too stiff a feel in here, mm -hmm. then you're doing so much holding down that you can't move around. Right, because you would do that. You would do a lot yeah, of that. Yeah, right? that's one finger just the post way up. I play. Right. right. Yeah. I'm all done. I'm just, the, I'm the, all the, done. the fact of first the, time I came down here, I was done too. The fact of the checking is what kills me. The, the, um, yeah, it looks like it's right on, ain't it? 
Yeah, that's amazing. So 